internet and access to the internet um, really can potentially do a lot of things from an exposure standpoint, from a child predator standpoint, um, and just from the day-to-day -day, uh, education uh, person's world, coming from the public school and now living here for almost uh, you know this first semester, I'll tell you, uh, especially the middle school students, they're they're at a time and an age, and we're even seeing you know it get earlier and earlier with each year. There's a lot of curiosity. And there's a lot of um, exploration that happens if they have internet access, whether it be by a phone or whether it be by a tablet um, or a computer, wherever that avenue is where internet is available to them, um, there is the potential for you know, good, thing, good kids to make bad decisions. And so we want to make sure that as parents and as school leaders um, that we are all working together to be aware of what's out there, be aware of the apps and the different things that um, uh, the world is unfortunately potentially bringing to our kids. And so Sergeant Bloom um, goes around and does a lot of informational pieces for the Sheriff's Office, but one of the ones that he gives is this presentation tonight. So we're very thankful, Sergeant Bloom, for you being here tonight, and I will turn the floor over to you. Thank Myself. I'm Paul Bloom. I'm the Public Information Director for the Marion County Sheriff's Office, and I'm also a crime prevention practitioner through the Attorney General's Office for Florida. And uh, so, what a lot of I, what a lot of things that I do is, is just like this: going around, talking, doing some educating. And because uh, for us, there's only one deputy for every thousand citizens in this county, so uh, we can't be everywhere. We certainly can't be with your kids 24/7. Uh, you struggle to do that, so uh, it's good to have these these moments where we can, where we can talk about what we see and what we know and Pass that along to you so to help you guys out. Um, you're doing, oh, look at that. Yeah, got my name spelled right and everything. Um, <laughs> all right. Let me just get in the right spot. So, the devil's in, in the details. And your child has an enemy, whether you know it or not. And uh, personally, and this is a Christian school, I'm a Christian, and I believe there is a God, I believe there is a devil. And uh, that devil is after your kids. I will promise you, promise you. And I've uh, been doing this job for a lot of years. I was uh, a firefighter paramedic. For several years prior to this, but the law enforcement side, we see a little bit more than the average person sees uh, what goes on out there. A lot of stuff happening out there tonight you'll never know about. One of my jobs is uh, my main job is dealing with the media every day. Uh, Y'all can feel bad for me now. But it's it's, uh, it's awful. Uh, it's not too bad. We, but I give them this all the stuff that happened over last night. Now they'll print about this much of what happened because it's if it's interesting, then yeah, they, they, they're trying to sell advertising space. And, uh, and the media may call up and do an interview or whatever if it's something crazy. They're not going to tell you everything though. And uh, when these, when we have some arrests uh, based on, you know, child child sex uh, assault arrest or something like that, that will typically make the news. Um, you won't always get all the details of how did this come about, or where did these people come from, how did how did this happen? Um, and you don't want. I was talking to this lady in the back here earlier, brother-in-law that's in, in law enforcement. Um, we had detectives that their full-time assignment is trying to catch sex predators online, people trying to lure children, and it's a, it's a horrible job. I sit with these guys and talk with them for a little bit. We bring them out and counsel them, you know, give them all the help they can get because they can't, it's, it's, a, it's worse than just watching bad car wrecks all day because it, it, the stuff they have to see and, and the, the detail of their investigations are, are terrible, but it's full time for them. And we, we have a few guys that do that. I could use 30 or 40 guys doing it and keep them all busy all day long. That's how big it is, it's a big, 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 big thing. Um, we we'll kind of show you. I mean, we, we grew up. Most of us in this room learned about stranger danger. You know, like you see a van like this, you don't want to park next to it at, at the mall. <laughs> um, this is a cop joke here. Like the owner's registered and the van is not because that van <laughs> probably don't have a nobody driving that has a good license or a tag on it. But um, that's old school. You know, worrying about about the, the don't talk to strangers thing. Somebody comes up and offers you candy, don't get in the van. Um, not that, I guess that can still happen, and, and maybe it still does. Uh, you know, and you should have that situational awareness if you're out with your children to make sure they're not running up to vans like this, but uh, not, not the method of choice for these people that are pray, praying on children. Um, it, it still is, a, it is something. So where are the threats coming from? Right here. Internet, you know it. Social media, phone apps, absolutely. Video games, uh -oh. 
Um, I always put this up. When I have kids, when I teach this and the, and the kids are in the room, you know, I, I just feel their eyes rolling in their head like video games. They're not bad. They are. We'll see what's, what's bad about them. Um, we know this. If I went around the room and asked you, hey, you think there's danger on the internet? Uh, yeah, everybody would say yes. Um, social media, yes. Phone apps, yes. Uh, video games, yep. Some of y'all agree with that too. Um, this is where they're trying to get your children, right here. Internet. This is uh, basically access to all the world's knowledge, good or bad, in the palm of your hand, right here, or your child's hand. If a child came in this room and I offered them this or these books, there's some, there's some kids that will take those books. They, they like to read. Most of them, I, I raised three boys, uh, right here. Has it got video games on it? I mean, they're not, they're not there to learn and, and read Wikipedia or anything. They just want to play video games and talk with their friends. Um, they're not really interested in reading books, uh, but it's access to everything, all the world's knowledge. We had to use encyclopedias. Every book report I did or around a research project in school, encyclopedias. Now they got everything. Um, so imagine everything that you don't want a child to see just behind a closed door. Uh, that's basically what this internet is. And, that's, and now imagine the door not being locked. Everything you, I'm trying to keep them from all this. Um, my middle son is now a deputy sheriff with us. He's been working for us for a couple of years. All the stuff I protected him from is what he deals with now. But imagine all that on the other side of the door, and you just chose not to lock the door. Put hard candy, colorful hard candy in front of this young child. What do I expect that child to do? They're going to crawl right over there and get that hard, much hard candy as they can before I can get them. And uh, if this children this age or any other room and they get quiet, those of you that are parents, you know what to do, right? <laughs> you get up and go check on them because they're up to something. Um, and children, when they're three or when they're 13, when they're 23, the, the, uh, the temptation still exists for them. And if we allow it to be in front of them, I, I have this room with this hard candy just laid out all over the floor behind that door that's not locked. They're going to learn that. They're going to go find that candy. If I catch them, great. They're still going to try to go back to it. If I don't catch them, they're going to definitely go back to it, right? So um, just think of the internet that, that same way. Um, click over here. Social media. Oh my goodness. So all these things, and there's a, there's a ton more. It's just a few, a few of the big ones that are out there. Facebook, Twitter. Most of your kids are not on Twitter. Um, Instagram, YouTube, a lot of YouTubers. I, I worked for about six or eight weeks. I patrolled. I was assigned to a, a elementary school here in town, public school. And right after we had that Forest High School shooting. And um, I had little kids. I'm at elementary school. These kids are this tall. Hey, you got a YouTube channel? I'm like, no, do you? Yeah. What? <laughs> How do you have your own YouTube channel? And they're, they're big YouTubers. They, they're into this stuff. We had a TV with like six channels. That, and I had to flick them and move antennas and all. I'm that old. I remember when a hashtag was a pound sign. Um, I don't know. It's, but they, they know about social media. And social media use is not going down. This is just this is a, a little bit of an old statistic. So it goes back to 2018. Um, and you can see where, how social media use is going up. I teach classes to senior citizens. I'll ask them to raise their hand just because I'm curious. How many of y'all have social media? <laughs> Senior citizens, yeah. Um, about the same way, how many of you have guns? <laughs> yeah. Um, if this was a stock, if you, those of you that, that play the stock market like I do, if that was a stock and I'm, I'm seeing this right here, I would want to buy into that, right? Because that's going one direction. It's going up. Um, I told you I, I deal with the media every day. Uh, those, how many of y'all grew up here in, in Ocala? I, I don't know, okay, several of you, good. So I grew up here also in, in yeah, I remember everybody had an orange mailbox uh, underneath your mailbox because that's when the newspaper comes in. Um, and now you don't see those hardly anywhere. That's hardly anybody gets the newspaper anymore. Um, Star Banner used to have that big building over there on Easy Street. <clears throat> they sold for like $9 million here last year. Um, it, when you walk in there, pretty creepy. There's nothing but cubicles. They used to be full of people typing, putting in one ads, whatever else they did in the, in the Star Banner. Gone. Printing press is gone. Their paper is printed in Gainesville now. Um, and it's much smaller much less involved. They, they uh, try to go online. They try to get in the internet game, the social media game, way late. Um, and they've got literally like four employees at the Star Banner. So um, news print media is kind of going away because by the time I get a newspaper tomorrow, it was already on my phone yesterday on the social media. So, um, and your, your children are like you. They don't want to be behind in the news. They don't want to be behind. Somebody tell them about, hey, did you see that cool TikTok video? And uh, you're like, oh, no, yeah. They want to They want to be on the cutting edge of all this stuff. And they don't want to they're going to continue with social media, I guess is the point I'm trying to tell you. But yeah, there used to be this right here. And uh, many of y'all, a few of y'all have admitted you remember this. Um, I'm going to hand you out something too. These are some of the apps up here 
but I don't want your kids to have, um, they may already have some of this stuff. Uh, Snapchat is a really big one for me. Um, but what is Snapchat? That was started by people that wanted to cheat on their wives because um, you can send a message, pff, disappears, and uh, you send a picture, pff, disappears, and it's encrypted, people can't find it. Um, does that sound like something a child would want if I was doing something good? Again, that's that kid in the other room that is being quiet <laughs> and uh, wanting to hide this stuff. We're going to talk about a few more of these, and I'm going to give you this handout with some that I put on here. Um, some of these others are like some chat apps, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And like Tinder, I mean, come on, um, Ask FM, Ask FM. This is one where you, your child, a lot of, a lot of our sex predators are on there. We do sex predator stings from time to time. I'm going to show you some video from that. Um, we'll go on here, pretend like we're 13 year old girls or boys, and you can ask any kind of question you want to, and somebody random will answer that. And uh, and when they answer, they can lead into more conversation. And, and you can, if you want to know who that is, you can give your name if you want to. You don't have to, but it can be anonymous. Ask an anonymous question, and some anonymous person will answer from around the world, wherever they are. Um, and the people that are answering those kids' questions, I can tell if a kid writes some kind of message, I can tell that it, some kid wrote that, uh, typically. Um, but it's, it's, uh, I won't pass these. Sorry, you know, pass it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, but get those off there. Hide app, we're going to talk about some more about some hide app. Um, but the big one right now is chat apps. What do teenagers like to do, even young kids? They like to, they're, they're social. And social media is social, it's, it's a way to talk. Even the kids that me, and believe it or not, I was one of the most shy kids in my whole class when I grew up. Um, that changed somewhere along the line. And now I speak for the sheriff's office. But it's, uh, even the shy kids, they're curious about what the conversation, they're not a part of the conversation, but they don't want to miss the conversation, what's going on out there. So they can, even they get in, involved in some of this stuff. And um, chat apps are the real, real big ones. Um, I'm going to show you. These uh, they offer ways for people to talk to anonymous people. I don't know why you want to do that. I, I uh, have you, any of y'all been to Walmart yet this Christmas season? We have just packed with people. Um, a lot of them that you may not want to talk to, but you can go online and talk to people that just you just don't even know. Um, there's thousands of apps and more added every day. Uh, and this is where predators are lurking, like I said. So this is uh, my phone here. Let me just see if I can play this. I did a search on my phone. I just screen recorded it. I just typed in chat apps. If you go to App Store on your phone, you can do this. And this is what come up. And just I'm just scrolling. Chat apps, chat apps, chat apps. Still going. I'm scrolling. And uh, they just keep going. At this point, I'm just, there's, there's so many of them out there. And these are just apps where your child can go sign up and, not, and click on the box that says, yes, I'm 18. Sure. OK. Um, that's all the screening that they put into this. It just keeps on going. I, I stopped it. I mean, just because there were just more. But if you type that in an Apple Apple Store, um, you, you can see for yourself the chat apps that are out there, and even the ones that try to 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 brand themselves as this friendly, happy, you know, just just social. Um, there's still a, a underlying theme there of of a, of a sexual nature, and some of them are not even trying to hide it. They're just like, hey, meet these girls that they these beautiful girls want to meet you. And so some 15-year-old kid is like, yeah, I, I guess she does. Let me just get on there. And it's, it's, they're not talking 15-year-old girls. And you try to tell them that. They may not believe you. Uh, but uh, they're talking to predators who they're talking to. Vault apps. Um, these are things that are pretty clever. And I hate the guy that even invented it because this looks like a calculator. And it will work as a calculator. So if a mom or dad picks up a phone, goes, oh, there's a calculator, clicks on that, you can add plus subtract and but there's a way to lock log into that thing and you can hide all kinds of pictures that you don't want anybody to see hide all kinds of whatever you don't want anybody to see conversations um, it's just a these little vault apps they call them there's several different ones that are, that are pretty popular and you got to have codes to get in there and all this other stuff that uh, prevents somebody else from seeing your secrets basically uh, so if you've got an iPhone it, it should come with a calculator already um, make sure there's not another calculator on there um, that looks looks suspicious. Location tracking. This is huge. Uh, and it's marketed as a way for um, businesses or people to just stay close to each other, track each other. There's apps. Um, I, I ran a BMW store in another state for, for several years before I got back into law enforcement about eight years ago. They was for, so now there's one that they market to, to these car dealerships. So if you're, if you're shopping at the Chevrolet dealership, um, there's 
that your phone tracks you. you. Believe it or not, believe it that your phone tracks you, and believe it or don't believe it that your phone listens to you. It absolutely does. Uh, I sat in a class with a man that his job was for the federal government. Um, this was, it was a law enforcement only class um, up in Tallahassee. Uh, his job was to screen people that the president is going to meet in other countries or whatever. That's his. That was his sole job. And he tried. He tells me we're talking after class. He's like he he buys boxes of what we call burner phones, the little flip phones from Walmart that you can just make a new number every time you get it, put on 50 minutes. See, if I travel, I got this. Um, he's got tape all over his stuff, cameras and everything. He um, doesn't want to use a smartphone except at his home, and he uses different names. Just all kind of crazy stuff, because he says, without telling you all the secrets, yes, we, we ping their phones, we listen to what they say, we see what they look at, we track everything they do. Um, and that technology was marketed as a business thing, it's great for business. So if I'm shopping at the Chevrolet dealership, they can see that you're there, and you pay for this service. If I if I own a Ford dealership, and I want to see who also shopping at Chevy today, and it shows me somebody comes into like a little geofence, they drive on the lot, and they leave the lot, boop, they get an automatic message from Ford. Hey, some great deals down here at Ford today, uh, five thousand dollars off, whatever, whatever, and they're tracking your phone and your location, and the social apps do the same thing. Yeah, that that technology has existed for quite a while now. Um, click over here, this is the one here, and you may have seen some of this um, on Snapchat. You can, you can go on here and, and track your location. And for kids, if I'm a you know, teenage kid, middle school kid, um, it's fun, because we're, we're, we're social, we want to hang out. Hey, where you guys at? Oh, all right, I see so-and-so's here, so-and-so's there, um, they're up at the mall or whatever. And it allows you to ask, hey, do you want to request their location? And if your, ch your child has Snapchat, they could, if they don't turn that off, you can turn that feature off on Snapchat. If they don't, um, they can be tracked and people can request their location. I can pretend, um, you know, hey, there's a 14-year-old boy and some really pretty 15-year-old girl says, hey, this is me. I'm at this mall. Um, where are you at? Can I meet you at the mall? And yes, what are you wearing? A red shirt. Okay. And they're not talking to this beautiful 15-year-old girl. They're talking to some dude and uh, he's, he's out here trying to scoop up. Um, Kid, he's, he's a child sex predator, and it's uh, at the the tracking, location tracking. Some of the video games, Roblox. Um, this one needs to get some of the kids mad. They're like, I like Roblox. Um, if you haven't heard of this, it's just a little fun video game, I guess, for kids. And um, there's toys out there. When you look at this, it looks like he's like little little Lego looking characters, or very, I don't know, um, I don't know, very harmless looking to me. Like, just want to get out there. But when you look at what's going on, it's kind of social. They're meeting in a town square, right? It's this social thing, and you can talk, interact with other people. Um, if you go to the App Store, and you click on that app, it, it all, all the apps will give you a description of their app, what it is. Um, this is from Roblox, right here. Hey, take the phone on the go. Roblox features full cross-platform support, meaning you can join your friends and millions of other people on their computers, mobile devices, Xbox One, or their virtual reality headsets. Um, that's um, what they offer from Roblox. This, this one also, you read further down. Hey, chat with friends. Why would I want to chat with friends on a game that looked like that? With little Lego characters. Hang out with friends around the world using features. Private messages and groups. I don't want my kid to have private messages from millions of people around the world having access to that through a video game. So you look at this thing and you go, oh, it's a video game on his town. Big deal. Click on it. Roblox. Oh, this looks boring to me as an adult. It's a little kiddie looking thing. But there's chat features. And uh, you got to be aware of that. Um, human trafficking goes on. I get asked that all the time. We have um, detectives that work human trafficking here. We made arrest in human trafficking here. Um, Ocala PD made arrest last week, still investigating, working one um, here in Ocala. It's the world's fastest growing crime, according to the Department of Defense. Uh, most common form is sex trafficking, uh, according to the United Nations. And look at this $99 billion a year is what. It's estimated that the human trafficking brings in. Just to give you a reference point on that, Starbucks, if you've ever heard of that company, uh, they claimed about 24.9 billion last year. That's how much Starbucks made. They're making 99 billion. The chances of them shutting that down, the chances of them shutting Starbucks down is very, very slim, right? The chances of this shutting down is nothing. They're not gonna do it, it's gonna continue. There's money to be made in that, they're gonna continue doing that. Um, the penalties are very, it's very difficult to get caught. And, and if they do, especially in these other countries, there's not, some of these other countries don't have laws against it, and, uh, and they're preying on, on our children here. Um, statistics on sex predators, 
70% of child sex offenders have between one and nine victims. 70% of them. Uh, when we catch them, it's not always the first time they've done this. It's the first time they may have been caught, but it's not the first time they've done it typically. And they tell us that. Um, and, and you can, it, I've arrested some myself, and, and you just feel it about them. You know, they just have a different, different mindset. Uh, our system turns them loose. You got, you got sex offenders that uh, um, get turned loose from time to time. They're, they get put on probation, and um, we go do our sex offender checks every month. We check on all the sex offenders in this whole county to make sure they're still at that address, they haven't changed jobs, or their vehicles changed, or all their information. Some of them are required to come down and register with us, and some of them have a little bit less restrictive um, you know, things for them, but uh, they are out there. And, um, and to know that they have uh, multiple victims is, to me, is pretty disturbing. Um, thank you, sir. Marion County, Florida. Total, total number of sex, registered sex offenders here in our county, 1,069. And uh, within five miles of this place, 198. And uh, that number fluctuates, changes as they move around and, go, and get move into Ocala. They've got to come here. They, they're free to move to our county from another county or another state as a sex offender. They just have to register with us. Um, but I'm, I'm just telling you, there's, a, there's quite a bit of them. And, do I believe somebody can change? Yes, I told you I'm a Christian. I believe God can change anybody, and and I've seen them do it. But uh, I've seen people change. But I can tell you, these sex offenders, uh, a lot of them do not. They get rearrested. They, they they're back in the same thing. Um, and it's it's uh, and when you read some of the reports and the stuff that they were into and doing, it, it, it's sickening to you. I mean, it's physically sickening. Our, our detectives, like I said, they had to come out of there from time to time just to take a break off of that unit and somebody else fill their place. Um, to think that they could be reformed and just turn back into society. They should be good. Here's, they did a year in jail and now they're on probation, so they should be fine. They exist. Not all of them are bad. Uh, they, some of them change, like I said, but they, uh, they do exist out there. Video games. This is a, just about a four minute video. Uh, I'm going to show you here real quick. So video games are another way. How do I lure kids? Kids are not, again, they're not that interested in the books. They are interested in the video game. And uh, video games, when I grew up on the Atari, was was fun. You can have fun with Atari. Palm, like, you know, um, I'm that old, but uh, but they've changed quite a bit. It's it's a uh, it's a big difference. We'll show you some stuff here now. Let me see. Here in your social media feeds lately. The concept is pretty simple. Parents prank their kids by unplugging the child's video game console in the middle of gameplay, and the reactions are viral gold. Oh God! likes to be forced to stop having fun, but something different is happening here. If you were to take away a child's books or Legos, you're not likely to get a reaction like this. So what's going on here? Why are these meltdowns so dramatic? I've treated a number of children over the years who struggle with problematic video game uh, behaviors. I think one of the most important things to keep in mind is that the child will be able to tell you, I'm trying to not do this, but I can't stop. And I can't get myself to stop. I don't want to behave this way, but I'm struggling. Why did you do that? That was my game to get to the Overwatch. According to Dr. Milham, these reactions aren't necessarily because of an addiction to gaming. Instead, what we witness in these videos are children who are victims of their own biology. Being able to tolerate the feeling of frustration or that moment of sadness when you decide I'm not going to continue doing this, that is, is crucial. One of the reasons the children in these videos find it so hard to control themselves is because they don't yet have a fully developed prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is a key component in the brain that's involved in helping us to control impulses and urges. When you have something like the video game being turned off suddenly, the child is faced with having to feel those negative emotions. Another factor is dopamine, which is often referred to as the brain's pleasure chemical because it's associated with feelings of euphoria, motivation, and concentration. Dopamine is a key component of regulating reward mechanisms in the brain. The stimulation we receive from playing a video game impacts the same pathways that are present when one is becoming intoxicated with a substance. So it's no surprise that many of the behaviors and reactions 
uh, that we see for a child who's struggling with having this sudden stop brought about in your video game playing has analogs to someone who has been asked to stop the usage of a substance. Let's say a child is about to eat a piece of candy. The anticipation of eating that candy gives the child a spike of dopamine. Then their parent yanks that candy away from them. That action will cause a drop in dopamine, which will upset the child. Video game designers have gotten remarkably adept at keeping gamers entranced with a steady source of intermittent rewards. More rewards means a constant stream of dopamine released into the brain throughout gameplay. So when a parent pulls the plug on a child's video game, there's an even more powerful effect. Video games are inherently designed to be stimulating and exciting and to draw us in and, and that to some degree is a healthy phenomenon. It, it's just that it, for some it's more difficult to control than, than, than for others. It is the video games somehow impairing their ability to function in the home, at school, or with other children. If we're not seeing any problematic behaviors and it's just concerned about the frequency, then I think we can work on just trying to bring the frequency down. For many households across the country, meltdowns over video games are a very real part of everyday life. Parents we have spoken with say they find themselves in a battle of wills with their children when they tell them to turn off a video game and do homework, eat dinner, or go to bed. Dr. Milham recommends implementing two basic rules. Number one, establish clear and consistent rules about the days and time of gameplay. Number two, enforce a transition period between gameplay and bedtime. Dr. Milham also recommends that parents be wary of an underlying problem. Games may just be a coping mechanism. One of the most important things is to really curb the video game playing and monitor it and put interventions in place before it's a problem. Once the video game playing becomes a problem, at that point, the parents will probably need to seek guidance from whether it be therapists, counselors, or other care providers in order to help deal, to assess and deal with the challenges at hand. That's Wall Street Journal, and that, who's that? Perhaps you've seen... I don't agree with what they put out, but that one I do. It's, uh, so there's, there is a, a chemical thing going on. I mean, you know, all that work with junior high kids, you know, there's some chemical changes in their bodies, and, and uh, it's a very real thing. It's a, it's a physical thing. It's biology. But dopamine is a very real thing. Uh, we deal with alcoholics, drug addicts every day in our job, and it's a thing. It's something they need this to feel like this. And if I don't have this, then I won't feel like this. Uh, those video games, very much the same way. That phone, very much the same way. Even for adults. If you don't believe me, let somebody take your phone and say, hey, take my phone for the day, I'll get it back tomorrow. Ugh, that's hard. Because, you know, I, I'm guilty of it. I have to check my phone because I have reporters emailing all stuff all the time. But then some of it is for personal. You know, let me check email, let me check, let me check social media, let me check this. And, um, and doing that does give you just a little slight dopamine. There's a, there's a, a real physical thing that happens there. And, um, it's happening with children. So a lot of times people, being a parent is, is a lot of work. I just got my, my last one, is, it just started his freshman year of college, my youngest one, and it's still work. I thought it was going to be it, but it's not. Um, it's still, I'm still able to check on him and hey, what's the grades going like? Well, you know, it, you, it's work being a parent. Um, throwing him into a room and saying, hey, you got enough video games? Here's some more video games. Knock yourself out. We're going to be in the next room. Uh, it happens so much. Um, this time of year, we, we uh, I work with some different groups and we try to provide some like some Christmas for some kids that just don't have. Uh, one of those is the youth ranch, the Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranch, and these kids that, are, that have come from some some heartbreaking situations. And, um, and, the, and they're, the youth ranch is helping them overcome it. But we we uh, collect up donations, buy them toys, provide some food, and just spend some time with them. But to hear what they've grown up in, a lot of them were just simply ignored. They were put into another room forgotten about. Some of them were left at home for hours or even days. Uh, one kid I talked to was left in a, in a tent. He lived in a tent and his parents left. He don't even know where they went. They just, they just lived in a tent. So he was 15 years old. He started living in a tent all by himself, stealing and begging and whatever he could do to survive. Um, but, the, but a lot of it, these parents, they don't want to put the effort into it and they just push this kid off. And you can do it on a small scale. He, you know, not so much that where you're throwing your kid into a tent, you're just walking off and leaving him. But, Throw them to another room with just video games. Um, just be aware because it is a thing, and these kids will adapt to that. They're going to lock onto it, and this is what we used to have: Pac-Man. You know, you go down the Pizza Hut, be playing some Pac-Man until you ran out of quarters. Um, it wasn't violent; it was fun. And the only time it got violent is when you lost and you got mad that you lost. But um, 
Still some dope meat stuff going on there. This is what they are now. Guns and violence. Or it used to be, I can remember when I first started, if we had a shooting in town, it was something. You know, would, would the news want to know about it? We had a, we had shooting, there were shootings last night. You probably didn't even hear about it. Um, we had one today, you probably didn't hear about it. Uh, the news media doesn't even call me about it. Did somebody die? No, okay, don't worry about it. Um, but it's a quick go-to. People just going carrying guns, carrying stolen guns, um, underage kids carrying guns. Um, and we're, we, for a while we act surprised. People don't really act surprised anymore. It's shocking to us that try to live good. Just We're just here to go to work, survive, and, and provide for our families, and do what's right. It, it shocks us when we hear about these things. But, there's some, but it's, it's so commonplace. But, but what do we expect? You know, we, we put that room out there, all that hard candy for a small three-year-old to go in there, and we were all upset they were eating the candy. Um, do some of the things on these video games. If you, if you have a video game with, um, it's hard to see that, but with um, Grand Theft Auto, if your kid has that, throw it right out. Um, it's not just about stealing cars and running from the police. It is a lot more. These are the prostitutes in here. Um, you know, it's all adults in here. Um, I was using the PG version, some of the R version. Um, there's parts in this video game where you go around, you pick up a, a, a prostitute, and uh, she, in, in this video game, this prostitute will say things that are worse than rated R, um, of a sexual nature. Um, she will perform oral sex, and then you, you were to kill her, get your money back, and you get extra points for that uh, in the video game and drive off. Um, and I don't know how to make that any softer. Um, it's, uh, and it's a game that attracts kids. It's, it's Grand Theft Auto, we're, we're just racing cars. So a parent that doesn't care, doesn't pay much attention, you see that video game, like Grand Theft Auto, that doesn't sound good. Ah, we're just, it's just running car, you play, it's car chases. Okay, whatever. No, it's not that. There's it's a whole bunch more to it. And it's, uh, there's, there's several versions of it now. I don't know what they're up to now. But, yeah, put your kids right in front of that. Shootings. Um, Grand Theft Auto is a lot of shooting, a lot of violence. Drugs um, and sex. This is one here. This is, and there's, there's little add-ins you can do to these different things. Um, kind of like, uh, like Fortnite and some of these others. Uh, these kids have added in stuff, and this is one. This is a YouTuber. School shooter here, aka Lil Chase. Calls himself school shooter. School. As you know, all right. So, all right. So I'm gonna be using the shotgun first, and let's um dark kill comment. Are you coming, Foggy or Seagulls? So they're playing online together. Go. They got this added into the game. This is a school you're going to. You're the one. You're shooter. the one who said my. You, you call me dumb. We're going for the high score of about 30. All right. Still 30 so kids, this so. this kid right. called me dumb. This kid called me stupid. This kid called me extra stupid. All right, I got about three. I have the extra power, so you don't worry. No cop showing up. Kill this cop, and I'm just gonna use the assault rifle for the rest of the time. All right, that's um 10 on me. That's about like I think. Like, Close to 10. Alright, so I have 10 all together. So here I'm calling this kid to talk about so killing here, So that's um, about 16 already. That's 11, 12, 13. Oh wait, 13. 13. 14. Wait. You get the kids on the ground. So far I have 14. Alright, 24, whatever. I'm gonna get the cops. 20, 26. Oh no, this is bad. What? So, pretty disturbing. That kid is uh, just very coldly and calmly and methodically um, shooting people, getting a high score. And we go for the high score of killing 30 people. We kill the cops because the cops are coming. Um, some more add ins to these games. Um, this is one, uh, we'll show you this. So the idea is you, and then there's some skill to it. You kill the security guard first, and then you can kill, you can shoot more children. Um, and, whoops, I'm sorry, let me go back. So now, yeah, you go around, you kill, kill the security guard, shoot as many people in, in here as you can, um, innocent victims. At the end, you, you jump off a building, kill yourself to get extra points. 
And then they flash up these two clowns. That was the uh, Columbine High School shooters. So they're very proud of them. That's the add-on. Yes, sir. I may be the only one who doesn't know, but what do you mean by add-in? So they can, they can put in these different um, things to your game. You can pay and get these extra things you want to, a school like shooter. Buy on that yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just add in this stuff. Um, and you get these, a lot, of, a lot of gift cards being bought and sold and given away right now. So you give away Xbox gift cards. Um, these kids can buy these things and uh, you get these little these extras for mm -hmm. these video games. Um, that's horrendous, you know. And, and Fortnite is another one. Fortnite, you get these happy little characters, you know. It's a gingerbread man. Come on, that's a count back in a beat. I'm a parent seeing this, and I'm telling you, I talked. To, I went to a uh, we had a, a thing for foster children Christmas last night, and uh, we had a couple hundred foster kids out there. And a boy this big was talking talk, talk to me last night about playing Fortnite. I mean, he is this big. I don't know how old he was um, playing Fortnite. And I'm like, hey man, you know, I'd rather see you playing playing some football or something outside and, and uh, getting away from that Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite is a, is a very common game. It's been around for a little bit. Um, what's the object of the game? I, I mean, I don't know. Well, it's there's a big circle that's closing in, and all you got to do is survive, kill as many people as you can without getting killed yourself as the circle closes in on you. So there's an element of pressure, an element of, I don't know, uh, if you got to do this. And you try to upgrade your weapons and get better weapons to be able to kill people quicker. Um, seems very innocent. Uh, we, I, I served in the Army, and one of the things the Army does, and, and we do in the Sheriff's Office, we have these a big, for lack of a better term, big video game, video training. Um, they did studies on soldiers that found that uh, soldiers don't like to shoot others, enemy, even enemy soldiers. It's hard for us, as a, somewhere inside that human being, doesn't want to kill another human being, and um, just because you're being told that's the enemy, uh, it's different if that person's shooting at you. But it's 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 hard just because the person is armed. Um, and we do it. We do scenarios. We have a, a really nice state-of-the-art video thing there at the sheriff's office where we train, and we have scenarios, good good guy, bad guy stuff. Uh, they used to have like the pop-up bad guy, the pop-up good guy. It's, it's way cooler now. You know, it's all it's all 3D wraparound screens and stuff, and. Uh, and you'll find this hard just because the guy's holding the gun and you know he shouldn't be holding that gun and you're yelling commands at him. It's hard even though he can shoot, point and shoot the person standing beside him, uh, like a hostage situation or something. You have to shoot this person. It, it trains us because there's a hes natural human hesitation there to not do that. And so we train to overcome that hesitation and, uh, and so we can do our jobs more effectively. The kids are doing it way ahead of us. They're, they're, they're out ahead of us with this. Um, and the video games are all, they're all cloaked like this, bright colors. We saw the Roblox thing. It's bright colors, but there's there's chatting that goes on. Talk to all your, they advertise that, and uh, and the same the same with Fortnite. Um, you see the headphones. The kids are wearing headphones, talking to somebody. Um, listen, I, I raised three boys. Boys like shooting. They like video games and uh, and uh, food. Uh, I went through a lot of groceries with three boys, and they're all very close in age. Um, but uh, they want to get their headphones. They got they got headphones. Oh, we want to talk to our friends at school. Okay, so, um, and I, I was a boy once too, and I know how slick I thought I was, you know, tricking my parents and telling them stuff. Um, and so we got that, and I said, who's your friends? And he named them, playing with this one, that one, this one from school. Okay, and so I just busted up in on them one day and just, hey, let me, let me listen in on this. And some kids on there cursing and stuff, and I said, hey, hey, what's your name? And he tells me, and, and they all got quiet on there, because like somebody's dad just got on here, you know. Um, and then I hear some guy, somebody will sound like an adult to me. And uh, I said, yeah, pull the plug on that. Hey, let me give me headphones. No more headphones. We're not going online. Y'all can play with each other here in the house, but we're not going online and playing with other people. I know that's fun and cool, but no, not doing that. Um, and in, in my house, I, I say, I, I give you all these bad things, but I also want to give you some ways to, to help you. Um, you as the adult, if, you, if your child has a phone, and my children, especially when they started driving, they got a cell phone because I needed to know where they were and be able to get a hold of them. Um, you can't even find a payphone nowadays like we used to have to. So, uh, but um, when I did that, there's rules in the house. Even with our computers in the house, computer or a tablet is out. You know, nobody has one in their bedroom. Um, it's out in the open. You're going to use it. Come on out here, sit on the, at the bar, sit at the kitchen table, whatever, and use it. Get your homework done. Whatever you got to do. Um, same with the phone. My, the phones. Nobody had a secret code on there. I could pick up that thing and recognize my thumb, my code, my face, whatever and I can get into that anytime I want to. And I would just do random inspections. They had no, no, not the same time, not, not the same day every day, but just random, give me that phone. And, uh, and there's a few times like, oh, oh, <laughs> you know. And it, 
then my boys were good. They were pretty good. They they made their mistakes, but um, for the most part, it was just some some texting back and forth with some girl they're trying to get to go out on a date or something they didn't want me to know about. But um, but kids are are big into that. They live here so much. Um, it's hard if if you own a business and you have to do some job interviews, talking to some somebody that's 20 years old that doesn't know a time when there wasn't internet. Um, and they're so used to this right here, talking, chatting, typing, uh, they have a hard time in person even. It, the development uh, is kind of stunted a little bit because of that. Um, they need that. But have those devices, anything access the internet, out where you can monitor, have access to it. And, and there's some parental control apps. Go on that app store, find some good parental control apps that you like where you can you can see what they're what they're doing. It gives you an alert. Certain keywords are typed into to a Google. Google has one, and um, and it will get you an alert back to your phone. And I had that on my kids. iPhones you can link up, you know, like family phones and stuff, and it, it's on the same plan there, and, and kind of see what they're doing. It's it's just good to do. I also have the Life 360 app on my phone for my kids and and my wife. It's good for husbands and wives. My wife knows about what time I'm going to get home for supper or not get home for supper, depending on what I'm doing. And um, it's, but it's, you can track your kids, you can see how fast they're driving even. And I love that part. And uh, I've got on my kid for going a little too fast and uh, told him I'm going to call some friends and have them pulled over. But, uh, but have control of that phone. You own that phone. And, and I know sometimes there's, there's uh, uh, parents that are, that are divorced and, and, and this kid has rules over here and not so many rules over here. And, and it's difficult. Still put that on her phone. Um, and, and you got to do what you know is right as a parent. Whether that's this kid has another rule in another house, you still got to do what you know is right and, and, and give it your best. I think that's what God expects of all of us. As we've been given the privilege of having children and the blessing of having children, uh, He expects us to put everything we got into it. Because you have them for a little bit of time, and, and it goes by so fast. I sound just like my parents when I say that. You grew up so fast, um, and they do really do. Um, take it, take the energy. It's an effort to be a parent. It's a lot of work to be a parent, um, but it's a lot of reward if when you do it the right way. And these kids are, are um, raised up in the right way. And I always like to leave this year on too. It's um, it's not it's not anything new. This is written thousands of years ago, and uh, and it just lays it out lays it out clear. We have to see evil communications corrupt good manners. These kids are talking and, and sending pictures to each other. And also on the phone, it's good to talk with your kids. Hey, if you're a teenager and some girl sends you some naked picture, uh, that is child pornography on your phone, and you now own that. And that is a felony in most every state. Um, I think California is trying to change that, but it ain't going to happen here. Um, the sexting that they do, it's, it's very, very common. I'll promise you, I've looked at a lot of kids' phones that are, you know, in the job, and it's just very commonplace. They, they don't even, they're not really ashamed that I'm seeing it anymore. It's, it's, it, it, it's so much. And, um, and when, when I, go to these, I go to public schools, and I, I talk public schools and different things. When I, I always try to bring this up, like about knowing the law. We have a little class we do about knowing the law. And that's one of the big ones. They're like, hey, this girl's asking you for pictures, or this guy's asking you for pictures, and you send them. For one, it's, on, it's, it's out there now, and you can't bring it back. It may show up 15 years from now when you're trying to go for a job interview, and they Google your name. Um, it, it, it won't go away. And also, if you're the one receiving that, then you have child porn on your phone, and you can become a sex offender. So. Um, I try to scare them a little bit with that and, and, and show them the reality. It's, it's a reality. It's, a, it's not just a scare tactic. But in doing that, they're so accustomed to talking online, chatting online, chat apps. You saw all the chat apps. Just scroll through the thousands of them. Um, chatting online and acting that way, it distorts their reality. Their brains are not fully developed. And they think at some point this is what's normal. And now their uh, poor communication has corrupted their good manners. And so now their manners when they're out there, when they're grown 18 and over, um, their manners are poor and they're going down the wrong path. Uh, but you as a parent at this point have, a, have an opportunity to change that, squash it. And they may, they may hate you for it for the meantime. They're going to have kids of their own one day and they're going to be like, oh, this is why. And I, who knows what's going to be down there for your grandkids, um, what threats are out there. But this is a threat that's not going away. Um, it's going to always exist because there's money behind it. There's money in it. Uh, these social media apps, chat apps. So stay strong. These I've got to give you a list of just a few out there. Um, I encourage you to do your own research. None of these are, are, are healthy for a child to have. There's some good stuff for them to have. Um, and I realize, being realistic, that you're not, you may not be able to convince them to just get rid of the phone altogether or the app and go to reading books. That's going to be a tough sell. Um, but 
make your best effort to control what they are seeing, what's coming into that to that eye gate, um, because it will it will corrupt them if we're not careful. I want to open up some questions too. So if you have some questions about certain things, um, maybe you've seen or heard or or thought about um, or or methods that you may be using in your own home that that are that are good, we can share with it, with everybody else. Um, you got, yes, ma'am. Um, you had uh, in your conversation when you're talking about like 360, but before that you had uh, mentioned some parental apps. Parental control apps, yeah. Right. Do you have a few that are your favorites, or you find that that's so, the best? Google's got one. I don't know what Google's is. Um, it's not bad. Uh, let me just see. Um, there's one that's called just parental control app, and it's not bad. Um, Google Family Link is what I was thinking of. Um, there's a ton of them. I uh, I don't know if, if I can, and I, I really can't recommend any product specifically, but um, just go on there, do your own research on, the, on those, and get one of the high ratings. They're, they're very good. But I want I want to know what my kids are googling, and I also want to know what anything is going in there in, in, in texting and uh, things that are going, coming and going on that phone. And the best way, because there's, there's always going to be, though, some way around it, some way to encrypt a lot of these uh, apps, uh, like Snapchat, some of these others, WhatsApp, they are encrypted. And for us, even to get a phone, we have a detective that his, he's an IT, basically, detective. Um, all kinds of equipment, all kinds of training, uh, very smart. And we can get into a lot of stuff. Some of this encrypted stuff, we can't, impossible, we can't. And so there, there's always going to be, Somebody raised the bar, you know. We um, the police invented radar a long time ago. And some smart aleck invented the radar detector, and so we had a good laser. Um, but there's always going to be a way around it. So the, the best, complete way, add these things in these parental control apps. Um, but do the random phone inspections. Let me see this. Let me see. Let me see your tablet. Let me check your computer uh, browsing history. Just all the time. And they know that about that's going to happen to them. It helps them clean themselves up. Now, I'm not going to say they're not going to be with their buddy. And, hey, let me look at your phone. Your buddy's going to see, they're going to see something on the buddy's phone. Um, you know, but we got to do it on our own as best we can. But do the random inspections, get some sort of parental control apps, Google search apps, um, parental control. And I think they'll uh, definitely recommend it. That it'll help you. Yeah, great, great question. What about the, uh, the location services dynamic? Like, I know on your settings you can go in there and turn that off but yeah. would you have to do that for every single app that the kid had downloaded or so you can you can turn it off all together I'm, I'm talking about the iPhone because that's all I know if you give me a Android so I, if you I, did it there you wouldn't have to worry about there being settings on the app that you would have to disable I would still go in that app because these apps are clever and they and they, they work they have a lot of workarounds they have a lot of spying spy software the, the, for lack of a better term um, but it's all it's all marketing <laughs> marketing software to spy on me. I would go in those apps and again, my kid, there's no reason for my kid, child to have Snapchat. Um, my boys have it now. I said, one of 21, one of 19, um, and the other one's 30. But he, I said, they got Snapchat and they'll be sitting in the same house and send somebody a Snapchat. Hey, bring me a sandwich. Hey, bring me a, you know, from like, how, why are you even? But I don't understand it because, you know, we just yelled across the house and they got yelled at for yelling, but we would just, hey, bring me a sandwich. But, uh, they love it. That's what they use. And we have a hard time with our, a lot of our supervisors out there that are getting these young deputies coming to work for them. And like, hey, I, I tell them, you got to know, they don't, they don't know a world without this. And you, you're, you're working with a 20, 21 year old that doesn't know anything different. They're very, very comfortable texting or, or something like that, where, where we were not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a battle. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, all the way, you know, when, when you're, we talking about, but it's uh, turn off those location services. No matter what, I'll go through each app and just just turn it off for sure. Be sure it's off. Uh, it's still not a guarantee that it is. Um, a lot of, even the iPhone now has a thing where it says, "Ask this app not to track you." I, I don't want to ask any. I want to tell them don't <laughs> track them, but they still do. Those, those things still exist. If you could set in that law enforcement class we had, uh, I was I walked out there see I didn't want to touch my phone or say anything. And like cover it up because they absolutely listen. Now you might have seen it before. If you, you start talking about, I don't know, boat motors, and all of a sudden boat motor ads start popping up in your feet, going, mm -hmm. oh, weird. Um, it just they're absolutely listening. It happens, don't you? You've had it happen, okay? Uh, yeah. I've actually done that a lot too. 
Yeah, Alexa. Yeah, if you got Alexa in the room. Well, if it's always sitting there listening for Siri or Alexa, then that's listening to every other word you've said. You know it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's the same thing this guy I was telling us. So, hey, they've trained it to listen to Siri for it, to listen to you. And uh, we trade a lot of privacy for convenience. Yeah. That's that's the that's the way of it, you know. And I think that's the if you study the Book of Revelation, that's what's going to happen when they get the mark of the beast at some point. And uh, privacy and convenience is traded out. But uh, anyways. What other questions might you have? Nothing else. It's a, uh, yes sir. Really a question, it's a kind of an expansion. You're talking about parental controls. You know, one of the things that, you know, I have found is just a lot of accountability softwares that go on mm -hmm. that are, you know, they're, they're good for computers and cell phones, where it literally records every single thing you push on the phone. And, you know, similarly, it's looking for keywords yeah. and then, you know, you basically, you know, some of the ones that I've seen and even utilized in my personal life, you know, it, you establish accountability partners. In this case, in a family setting, I could see it being, well, my child's accountability partner is the parents. In this case, obviously the parents are accountable to each, each other. So, uh, but just the fact that it records everything, and then the ones I've seen, like, you get alerts if it detects something that was suspicious. And, you know, some of the stuff, you know, it might be a little overly aggressive. I'd rather be overly aggressive than, than not aggressive at all, but I just think that, Stephen, I could even think of that, you know, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a teenager, just knowing that someone is watching is a deterrent of itself. I think also, and I think the, I've even seen some that if like a kid were trying to uninstall it, you get an alert that they installed, uninstalled it on their phone. And so it's like, okay, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. So I, I mean, I, yeah, I know a lot of that comes with some sort of, you know, financial subscription attachment, but, you know, I guess I've always taken it as, you know, if I can, you know, drop, you know, Seventy-five dollars, you know, a year for Disney Plus. It certainly can do it for accountability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. No, you're absolutely right. It's good just having that accountability and um, you know, back and forth. You know, being able to see. We wear body cams at work, and when we started doing that a few years ago, it changes people's attitudes. I work with body cams, and I work without them. Prior to body cams, I've had people cuss you out, and as a supervisor, I had people call me, "Hey, your deputy came out here and he did this, that, and the other," and and they didn't realize that they were wearing body cams. Okay, I'll call you back. Look at the body cam, and the deputy did not do this, that, and the other. And I'll call them and confront them about what they did, and say, "Hey, you want to file that report? Because if you do, I'll beat your house to arrest you because it's a false report." And it, but but it keeps them honest. And so when they see that camera, it changes things. And so the same way, same concept, like you said on the phone, they know you're watching. Um, but I've seen a couple cameras in this building, so if I know I'm coming in here, and I want to do something wrong and, and steal the coffee machine. Um, somebody's gonna see me on camera, and so it keeps me honest. Not that I'm gonna steal your coffee. I mean, if, if I got for a, a really, really tired, I mean, uh, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's good. Just letting them know that you see them um, and, and they you know what's going on. Uh, just a question. Uh, I'm one of the nutty people that I even use my phone to read more than I use it for anything else, but uh, as a teacher, one of the things that I always get the most confused at is all the abbreviations they use. That make yeah. absolutely zero sense, but they're saying all these that's horrible right. things in abbreviations. Yeah. Is there any sort of like apps or even websites for parents that they can go on and check and see like what some of that stuff I, I, is? Yeah, there is. And great, great point because there, there's a lot of abbreviations they use because it, it's texting, yeah. fast texting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that stuff. So. Uh, and, what I did, I Google it because I'll hear something all the time and, or see something in a report and I'll be like looking at somebody, well, he said this to me, this is why I went over there and beat him up. I'm like, what did he even say to him? I got to Google it to see because it's, it's short for something, it's slang. And, and the reason they have slang is because they don't want a teacher to know what they're talking about or they don't want a um, uh, you know, parent to see what, what, what that means. And, and uh, part of those random phone inspections that I do, and my kids and I would see stuff and they're talking to their friends and I'd be like, hey, let me see this here. And uh, yeah, no. Um, okay. it, but it's always going to change too, so yeah. know that. It's, it's trendy stuff and trends change pretty frequently. So the only thing I can say you recommend is, is yeah, Google those things. Okay. Yeah, get the latest and greatest mm -hmm. is it's <laughs> stuff to keep up with. And it's one yeah. thing, I mean, like, we're talking about this and we're middle school, you know, elementary parents. But unfortunately, I have two who are in public high school, and what we have seen is everything now is online. Yeah. They don't have a choice. Right. They have to have a computer. They have to have access. Mm -hmm. They have to have certain things that they can turn homework in. Mm -hmm. There's no choice. There's no other option. The days of, like, here's a paper on yeah. some things are yeah. gone. It really is. Um, 
and it's just and one more reason why you have to just be that hover parent that's just right over their shoulder with what are you doing now what are you doing and, and I hate it because I, I don't see I mean we had Scantron that was the most technology we had growing up but um, and they had instruction on how to fill in a bubble if you couldn't I don't know why they had instruction if you can't pass out instruction you can't figure out how they're going to be taking this test anyway um, but yeah it's it's I hate that it's that way but it's it's not going to change is it it's, it's not, not. going to it's going to trend that way even during COVID these kids that didn't have computers public schools are buying on computers and uh here you go keep her at the house and parents are having to work during covid it was horrible for us on law enforcement side they're working during covid the kids home with a computer mm -hmm. um it, it's a lot of bad happened and i can just tell you over that and uh it's um it's, it's shameful but uh and, and a lot of stems from parents that are not involved so i appreciate you guys coming because you it shows me that you are concerned about being involved with your with your child and in their life and um that's what it takes. Some of these kids that, I, that we help with the youth ranch or um, around town, it's, it's because their problems stem from somebody who's just not involved as they should be. And you, those of you, the teachers, you see it in some of your students, even you can tell the parents that the kids that have parents that, that care and the kids that have parents that don't care and uh, don't care about kids, don't care about you, or even this guy's the head of the school, they don't care about him. But um, they put it back on us. And what's happened, the trend is uh, unfortunately for us falling back big big burden on law enforcement juvenile is a big big burden for us um as they I, we get calls all the time hey come fix this kid i heard one of them i come to work the other day and they're calling for a, somebody's out of control and i'm like well let's try this where it's at because somebody's just like causing a big problem it was an eight-year-old that didn't want to go to school the parent just called 911 hey come get this kid um but so it's a trend big big trend big push um where parents just don't want to be they don't want to do that it's because it's, it's work to discipline an eight-year-old and make him go to school. It wasn't work for my dad. My dad just did like this here. And we knew what that meant. Um, yeah. There was a meaning behind that eyeball. <laughs> and, uh, and it had some punishment involved. So, uh, but no, we appreciate the parents that are because it makes our job easier. Uh, I'll just, if I could echo that for just a second, I'll tell you, I really do appreciate y'all being here tonight. And, you know, I, I wish that it was 200 people that were here in the room and it's nothing against folks that, that couldn't make it out, but I do kind of just want to, to point out that um, you know, I worked in the public school system for a very long time and it was mostly at high school, but there was a time period in the elementary school and I think, you know, as a parent myself, there was some naiveness and, well, I'm going to make sure they go to a Christian private school because I know the environment that they're going to be in, I know that they're going to be you know, safe and they are, right? We have a wonderful, wonderful school here. But I'll tell you, um, in, the, in the public school world, it was not, um, you know, that to request nudes from people has become a thing. Like that, there's no like taboo-ness amongst that for teenage people, uh, I'm just telling you. And so we had multiple situations at multiple schools in different counties that I've worked in where um, there was the request for the nude, there was the receipt for the nude, and then they sent it to other people. And so now you've talked about three felonies um, in that you solicited it, you owned it, and then you, I don't know what the word is, you transferred it or whatever. Distributed. You distributed, you distributed that. And then there's cases where there's an 18-year-old senior who now is doing this with a 14-year-old freshman and that just, I mean, escalates, you know, adult charges and things along that nature. But for the culture of those young kids, for a lot of them, that was a norm request type of a situation, which is terrible, terrible to think about. And then the other thing that I want to say is, um, you know, Mr. McKenzie and I and the teachers, you know, there are um, situations where parents come concerned about things that they've seen on their kids' phones and we have to address it to the best that we can. That's part of why we wanted to have tonight um, to kind of talk through all of these things. And we'll post it to the website and let everybody know that it's on the website. But we have a fantastic school. We have a fantastic Grace family. We have great kids. But one of the biggest things that I've learned in education that hurts my heart, it's part of why I'm so passionate about this, good kids make bad decisions. Um, and when they're exposed to things, when they're curious about things, and they begin to explore things, it doesn't take but just a a snap of the finger for them to go down a rabbit hole and so we just we really do have to work together and be be proactive and um, don't don't know that we're in a safe environment but don't let your guard down because they're here that these things can't happen this is my message yeah i appreciate that thomas yeah it's true it's that it's that picture of that hurricane in the four and three-year-old and uh, good kids do make bad decisions but if we keep that room closed keep that candy up off the floor keep them out of that room whatever we got to do to do that